available now at shop.tcm.com and Barnes & Noble DVD locations. Good evening, everybody. Thanks for being with us on TCM. I'm Ben Mankiewicz. Tonight, we're examining the early career of our star of the month, Fred McMurray, which consisted primarily of screwball comedies for director Mitchell Lyson at Paramount. Lyson was an adept director of light farce and comedy, and under Lyson's tutelage, McMurray developed an endearing comedy persona that served him well throughout his career. However, McMurray worked with other directors during those early years at Paramount, particularly when the studio loaned him out for other projects. Our next film features McMurray in one of his earliest roles, working with a rising young actress and a fledgling young director, both of whom would become legitimate Hollywood heavyweights. The actress, Katherine Hepburn. The director, George Stevens. From RKO in 1935, it's Alice Adams. Hepburn is the title character, a poor girl hoping to climb the social ladder out of her station in life. She has surrounded herself with all the right friends and adopted various affectations she believes allow her to fit in with them. But the reality of her family's meager circumstances leads her to believe the only real way out for her will be secretarial school. That is, until she meets a visiting Prince Charming, Fred McMurray, who seems to like her almost as much as she needs him. Alice Adams marked George Stevens' first directorial effort in a major feature film. Today, Stevens is associated with his powerful epic dramas, Shane, Giant, and A Place in the Sun, to name three. But when he made Alice Adams, Stevens only had a few two-strip comedies and features to his name. But this debut was a sign of what his future held. The movie received Academy Award nominations for Best Picture and Best Actress for Hepburn, her second nomination of an eventual 12. From 1935, also starring Fred Stone and Shoemaker, Hedda Hopper and Hattie McDaniel, here's Alice Adams. 